Here, I want to come back to mortal and venial sin. Um, this is the, uh, the last thing, the Heidelberg Disputation. This is by no means part of the Lutheran Confessions, nor is it necessarily part of Lutheranism, if you can even define that and what that is. What it is, though, is something Dr. Luther wrote, and he wrote it fairly early, and it made all the Roman Catholics a bit angry. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. I just want to look at number 12, point number 12, because it really, I think, uh, gets, gets to the heart of this thing. He says, In the sight of God, sins are truly venial when they are feared by men to be mortal. Okay? So, so let's, let's we'll leave that on the screen, but let's kind of talk about that again. Venial means it won't send you to hell. Mortal means it will send you to hell. You see what he's saying then? The moment you think that your sin won't send you to hell, it's become a mortal sin. You think you're saved without forgiveness. That's a bad idea. The moment you think that your sin's um, forgiven in Jesus Christ, it's a venial sin. All your sins, your worst sins, they're all venial. They're not going to send you to hell. So the distinction is more about, do you believe Christ is sufficient or not? And indeed, it is a mortal sin to not believe Christ is sufficient. And in Christ, all sins are venial. But does that mean that they don't matter and you can go do them and do whatever you want? The way that distinction ends up getting used in history is it's like, okay, therefore I can do these ones and just be in purgatory so I can live this kind of godless life as long as I don't kill anybody, as long as I don't actually commit adultery. Or I can commit adultery but get, you know, absolution for that here. I can even do it beforehand and pay the guy and all this kind of stuff. Oh, here's some of my indulgences, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All of this is because of approaching it as if it's a give or take legal tit for tat. We're on the scales of balance and Jesus isn't quite enough, so we got to work it out on our own. When the gospel, the proclamation, is that God desires mercy, not sacrifice. And so he entered our life as mercy and sacrifice that we didn't make, but he made on our behalf. Absolution, public or private, is the announcement of that reality so that your ears can't miss it. And if in receiving it publicly, your ears are missing it, go talk to the pastor and get it privately until he's pounded it into your head. You too, you too, you too. And frankly, the Lord's Supper should do that. Take and eat. This is Jesus. Take and eat. This is forgiveness. I know your sin. I know you're a sin. I don't even need to know the sin of my people to know that they're all lying to themselves about something in life. I am. You. We all are. So trust what Jesus has done more than what you have done. And in that, then, seek to turn away from what you know to be evil, obviously. No, uh, do not live as a fool. Uh, uh, but by no means uh, fall into this realm of like, I've got to get it enough right. Uh, if Lutheranism is wrong, and as ism it often is, it's because we indeed think we have to line up all of these nuggets. We call them doctrine, and sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not from the Bible. We call it all doctrine, and we think if we don't have it all lined up right, then somehow we're not really faithful. To be sure, false doctrine is a lie from the devil and will always deceive you. At the same time, you're not going to be saved by getting your doctrine right. You're going to be saved by Jesus saving you. And if you, if you can't see that distinction, you're just going to beat yourself up over and over again.